Hey, what's up guys? Whoa, Zebo here to bring you a tutorial video or just really just do a rundown about uh, Tall Man's Finger Patch 2.1. Well, it was going to be 2.1, but now it's 2.1.1. Um, Blizzard this week, they buffed pets again. Uh, they made them so a lot more survivable, so we're actually able to get a lot more consistent rips. So that's one positive thing that they did do this week. So, uh... Basically, if you guys haven't watched my other Tall Man's Finger videos, um, those are a little bit outdated now because a lot of things have changed and a lot of things are different. So I'm just here to put together this video real quick just to let you guys know uh, the rundown, show how the build works inside of uh, Greater Rifts and uh, what items you need to build towards. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, Maskadrom, very important. Uh, you want to get preferably something that has 90% or higher on the pet damage. You want crit percent chance, you want int, you want vitality, you do want a socket. Um, in this version of the build, we will be running MS step for the 23% more life to make us a lot more toughness since pets scale a lot better. Um, normally, you kind of want to use a cooldown reduction uh, diamond if you'd like to use it, that's fine. But I personally, since we're running fetish sycophants in combination with the fetish army, uh, getting resets is really not that hard with big bad voodoo. So that's why we choose to run the MS step. More toughness, more survivability. You're going to need a good amount of toughness to survive as a pet build because you take, well, your pets scale off you and then plus you just don't want to get one shot at because when you die, your pets die. Uh, Tasker and Theo. Um, preferably, you want to get this trifecta, or if you'd like to run it, int, vitality, crit percent, critical damage, either or, depending if you need more more toughness, then you might want to, instead of going to the attack speed, just roll the crit percent chance, critical damage, vitality, and int. However, in this one, I'm pretty happy because I got 48% increased pet attack speed. I got int vitality. I got max attack speed, which is so-so, and I got crit chance, which is better than nothing. But, I mean, overall, a task for Theo is a task for Theo. Um, you got to use this for your pets. makes a big difference. Uh, running the three-piece Ogdles Authority. Preferably, you want to have int vitality armor and then increase zombie dog damage. Um, on this, I want to be re-rolling this this weekend to hopefully get perfect stats on it. At least 490 in, 490 vitality, you know, armor, you know, uh, zombie dog damage. So that's what I'm going to be working towards next. Same thing with the chest. I'm going for 490, 490 on the int and vitality, 15% zombie dog damage. going to craft a lot of these for the Ogdos rule. And then uh, this really depends on what you want to do. You can actually run physical if you'd like. If you'd like to get more damage out of the pain enhancer gym, um... Or if uh, you want to run fire, that's better for the fire dog, of course, and poison is better if you want to run for the tox uh, infectious toxicity gym uh, and the poison dog. But I'm choosing to run fire on this one, and again, I'll be crafting a bunch of these so I can get 490, 490 perfect stats. Just because, you know, I mean, when you're trying to push to a little highest, the highest, like, greater risk, you just want to make sure all your gear is pretty solid. Uh, Stringer beers. Now, this is debatable on the belt area. It's really up for grabs. The Drom, you're probably going to definitely use. The Tasker and Theo is undis you know, unquestionable. Ogdo's authority for a pet build is pretty much standard now. But you really do get some options depending on what necklace you get and what uh, belt you get. But I like the String of Ears. The damage mitigation versus melee. Uh, and it has really good tanky stats, so I was pretty happy about that. But depending on what you like to do, witching hours just as fine as well. Um, but like I said, you're definitely going to need some toughness. But uh, looking at this amount of toughness I had, I probably could afford to drop the string of ears and go ahead and run the witching hour belt. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and just use this option because, you know, I like the extra survivability. Um, Unity ring, pretty much standard. Solo greater risk. You need it. 50% damage reduction. I got one on myself. And I got one on my Enchantress in combination with her uh, Smoking Thurible, which makes it so that she cannot die, which grants me permanent 50% reduction. Uh, the Greater Rifts are kind of mandatory to have that. And then, of course, if you're running any type of pet build that you want to climb to the top, Tall Man's Finger is also definitely necessary. I got pretty lucky with this one, almost max and crit percent chance critical damage and a socket. Uh, Star Metal Cookery, another important part of the pet build. Um, out of all the pieces, like I said, Jerome, Tasker, and Star Metal is pretty much really important. If you don't have a Star Metal, you can mess around with a uh, Renho Flailer. If you don't have a Renho Flailer, you can use a Thunder Fury. Or you can even use a... Let me see if I have it. Yeah, I should do. Doombringer. Doombringer is a pretty solid option as well, too, because it has physical damage on it. Any of those are pretty solid for a weapon, but Star Metal is the best because they will allow you to spam Big Bad Voodoo. Um, the Ukapen Serpent offhand, I'm hoping to re-roll this to 15% zombie dog damage, and I might look for another one that has 700 and 700 vitality, but I'm pretty happy with that. It provides me good damage, toughness, and mitigation. Uh, it, most of the damage, will, like I said, 25% of the damage goes to my zombie dog, so I'm pretty happy about that. 
And then for the last two pieces, uh, since we're using Feta Sika pants, we're not going to be going with hexing pants. We're actually going to rock the uh, Black Thorns pants and the Black Thorns boots. Uh, the good alternatives to the boots are uh, the uh, Ice Climber boots, which I might look into, but I'm pretty happy about these boots. Uh, you optimally want to get in Vitality Armor Resistance on your boots and then just pretty much get the movement speed out of your Paragon levels because, you know, it, you, you just want that extra resistance or that extra armor. It makes a big difference. Um, same thing with the pants. Uh, pretty cool thing about this patch is that everything that's non-craftable for set items, they come with sockets. So I'm actually able to get some pretty decent Black Thorns pants. And then, of course, a two-piece bonus, 250 Vitality, 10% extra damage versus Elites. Um, and my necklace is just pretty much a generic. I mean, it has the extra effect. I do have the ring that goes with it, but the rings are pretty much non-negotiable. Eventually, I'm hoping to get a, uh, for the end game, I'm hoping to get something like this, Hellfire Amulet, maybe uh, Ant, Crit Percent Chance, Critical Damage. Jungle Fortitude would be cool, but realistically, I probably would want to have it be like, let me see if I can find it. I have one right here that has like Pierce the Veil. Problem is, I don't want to drop critical damage and not for a socket. But one of these two would be fine. Um, Jungle Fortitude will make my pets survive a lot more, which means the sycophants die a lot less, which means they can do more damage. Or if I run Pierce the Veil, then I can run Gruesome Feast for more damage. So those are the options I want to get in the future for my necklace, but it's not easy to get a, you know, uh, do all those, you know, do to, to get a Hellfire uh, amulet that rolls exactly what you want it to. So this will be uh, fine for now. Um, now for my legendary gems, um, it's still going to be up for debate. We all know that we're probably going to use Van the Powerful, 15% increase elite damage and 20% increase attack sec uh, damage for 66 seconds. I have mine at 36, 50 I do believe it's 70 or 80 seconds, but I could be wrong. Um, of 20% increased damage, we all know we're pretty much going to use that. I heard some people are not using it anymore because they don't like it, and I understand, but I, I prefer it. The extra elite damage is nice. And then, uh, you know, it's nice to have that extra 20% increased damage makes a big difference. Uh, Pain Enhancer. This is another one that's pretty good for pets, especially if you go on Sycophants, because it puts a bleed damage on the target. And uh, every enemy you're around that has that bleed damage gives you 3% increased attack speed. Attack speed transfers over to pets as damage uh, and allows you to attack faster, generate more fe uh, fed of Sycophants. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, I do need to get this a little bit higher. And then now the third gym, some people actually would say, hey Diva, why aren't you running the Pet Enhancer gym? I'm like, well, I've got a pretty amount of good toughness already. The pets are not really having an issue of dying. And I want to get more damage in the build. Um, other options, I guess, like I said, I could have used Gugaka Swiftness, but that only increases attack speed. And then I, if I get to rank 25, I get the cooldown reduction, but this build really doesn't need cooldown reduction. Some people might run Bane the Trapped. Some people might run Enforcer. Uh, like I said, like, we all can pretty much agree upon Bane the Powerful. I think most people are going to choose that. And then... Pain Enhancer is a pretty solid gem, even if it's physical. It's just the damage is really good and the attack speed increase. Um, and then some people might want to use Infectious Toxicity gem. So, I mean, they're always going to alter. This is the setup I like to use. I like Pain Enhancer, and I like gem of uh, Infectious Toxin. Now, you might say, like, well, Debo, pets don't trigger. Well, Blizzard changed it on Thursday and allowed pets to trigger the Infectious, uh, the infectious Toxicity or Toxin gem or whatever, how you want to say it. They allow it so that pets when they hit they trigger the poison so in combination with the fact that when my pets also crit they'll also apply that physical bleed we got the bleed we got both the poison and the bleed going on the targets uh and then once they start taking that poison damage they'll start taking 10 percent increased damage and that will help out also with the uh the dot damage that's put on by the pain enhancer and any other sources of damage that's done to the enemy so that's pretty much how i'm rolling it right now um like i said the biggest alterations to the build in the future i'm gonna get a better hellfire amulet uh, looking into maybe doing some ice climbers and maybe switching out the belt and rolling perfect pieces and once we do that then we'll be able to see how high it goes um, because I'm not really trying to bit um, I mean the highest build or highest greater if I hurt with pets is like 37 38 I'm just trying to get it so that I can do the pet build this build at 35 consistently and what do I mean by consistently is like if I were to run 10 greater risk at 35 about seven or eight out of I'm sorry, seven or eight times out of ten, I'll be able to clear it, regardless of mob density, regardless of how bad the mobs are. I'm just trying to make a build that's consistent. So if it can consistently perform at level 35, then I don't really have too much to worry about, because then I know I can make a run for 36, 37, 38 if I do get a little bit of luck. So I'm trying to pr promote consistency. Um, 
and so that your bill can be reliable so you're not sitting there you know like well you know I can do 33 okay but sometimes I get lucky and do 34 and 35 you know I, in my definition I think um, what greater riff level you can do is the one you can do repeatedly over and over without too much trouble and clearing it with at a comfortable pace I kind of think that's more of a realistic greater riff number than if you get like 40 like level <laughs> Like, oh, you get like 50 level 40 keys and you keep spamming it until you get that perfect riff with the conduit pylon. I kind of don't like doing that. It's kind of boring, but I mean, that's how people do it to rank. But I mean, I guess it is what it is, but this is a build design just to make everything pretty solid in terms of what you do and being able to use that pet build to get to a high level greater rift on your own. Um, for the core, I got 25% of the movement speed because like I said, we gave up movement speed for more survivability on our boots. So to make it up, we got movement speed there. Uh, rest of the points into intelligence. Um, critical percent chance, critical damage first, and attack speed. But if you like a little bit more attack speed or you're kind of low on it, you might want to do attack speed, critical chance, and the rest into critical damage. Um, I put my points into armor and life percent first, and I'm starting to get all resistance now. And actually, in the last tab, I got life on hit. Or actually, I probably should put all the points into life on hit because that helps with the rate of toads, area damage, and then just put the rest into resource cost reduction. We don't need gold fine, of course. And let me see, I think we got everything here, except for the actual skills. Rain of toads, pretty straightforward. Piranhas of Paranato, nothing surprised here. John for the increased time, burning dogs, because we like the fire dog. And then we also have Legion of Daggers, Slam Dance. Now some people might ask, well, why don't you run Tiki Torches? Uh, the Tiki Torches is cool. Um, but I got five fetishes that do 100, I think it's 180, yeah, 180% weapon damage, and two ones that do 85% gun damage as fire, which is okay. But in my opinion, I might rather just go ahead and have the extra three fetishes out. They help reduce the cooldown and Big Bad Voodoo and also the fetish skill. And all of them do 180% damage, so i just rather have the extra three fetishes that do 180% damage. But if you like to run Tiki Torches, you know, that's up to you or whatever element you're deciding to run. I just prefer to run Legion of Daggers, Big Bad Voodoo Slam Dance. Uh, passives are Pierce Veil, Fetish Sick Offense, of course, Grave Injustice because of Piranhas of Paranato and to help out the, re the cooldown reduction for uh, Fetish Army and Big Bad Voodoo. And then also Midnight Feast increases the damage of the Zombie Dog, and that's the biggest one. And uh, that's pretty much the Paragon levels, the skill setup, the gear choosing, and everything like that. So then now we're going to go ahead and just go into a greater rift. And then just like my other videos, I will break this up into about four. The first video is, of course, just to showcase the build, the skills, what you need. And then the rest of the videos will just be me uh, climbing the greater rift until I've reached my cap level. And since we do have fetish sycophants in combination with the uh, fetishes from the skill, for the most part, uh, it's pretty easy to deal with the cooldown because we're generating the fetishes and uh, we have the ones from the skill, so it rarely ever goes off cooldown. Or we usually have all our fetishes off cooldown. Now, you're not going to see that many fetishes generated at the low waves because. Um, like I said, I'm not bragging or nothing, I just, I just do too much damage. But as the monsters start scaling upwards, you see I got two fetishes out, you'll start seeing more and more. Um, but for the first couple waves, just do the Infectious Toxicity Gem and the Pain Enhancer. It does so much damage when you level up the gems and use both of them together that just for the most part, when the mons when my uh, pets get land that damage on the target, it's putting the bleed damage and it's putting the... Uh, poison damage on top of them and are taking 10% more damage. Now you can start seeing more fetishes actually coming out. Don't have to worry too much about survivability because we got a really good amount of toughness. And uh, I gotta still confirm this all the way but I do believe with the fire dog with the AoE it does trigger the uh, pain enhancer and the um, the poison gem. Uh, the apex toxicity gem or toxin gem for uh, putting it on the monster since it's the AOE damaging of the fire dog and that's why I like the fire dog because it's the AOD damage is so, so good and as you see when the monsters start getting more HP we actually got more fetishes and the nice thing about the fetishes they don't die anymore the only thing fetishes still die to is more lose and they die to uh, maidens and that's just how it goes so we're at wave 34 doing pretty good usually the waves don't go so well but Blizzard also changed how the waves work they took away a lot of the monsters that run away and 
uh, are that pretty much emo and crazy and they have preset monster groups so they can control things a lot better and make things a lot consistent I'm kind of shocked that I got up to wave 35 I might die out at this point we'll see um, like I said but that damage from infectious toxicity gym in combination with the pain enhancer and then every enemy that's getting hit by the bleed dot increases my attack speed and that's more damage for me in my past now the fetishes are starting to die so I might actually cap out at 34 or 35 I think this is so we got to greater with 32 um, so that was pretty good we're gonna continue close this down and we're gonna go ahead and start up there's really not much to the pet build um, the only hardest parts you have to gauge is when you use your spirit walk, what to do versus reflect monsters, and um, just basically not wasting your fetish army cast. But then again, once you get a bunch of fetishes out, you don't got much to worry about. So, first room is pretty good. Good mob density. Two elites. Just standing back and being careful. Since we got good toughness, we don't have to worry too much about the thunderstorm. If you don't run enough toughness, not only will your sycophants might have like a little bit of problems of dying, or they're going to die more often than not. Um, one second, there we go. Um, you just, you'll die to stupid stuff. So, like, I can actually take those thunder shots because, like I said, the toughness makes a big difference. And I'm just standing back and playing safe. I got my spirit walk up, so I don't have much to worry about. And, like I said, I'm just sitting back and chilling. Now, some of the fetishes are going to die with sick fans, and that's normal because certain mobs just hurt them so much. But, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, they're constantly getting generated, and, uh, for the most part on most trash mobs and stuff like that they stay alive really well and sometimes on elites just you can't do nothing about it and they're gonna die so that was a pretty good mob density in the beginning hopefully that will carry on through um, sometimes the worst enemy about you in the greater riff is because they're so random um, if you get like a greater riff full of maidens that can ruin your day if you get a greater riff full of more loons that can ruin your day um, but even through that and that adversity like the build still performs really well um, I'm trying to think what else gives you bad. Reflect damage is pretty bad, but reflect is really not that bad if you have common sense. It's like, okay, well, you see the reflect damage, you need to stop attacking. And then right about the time there's a couple seconds and you can start attacking right as it fades off. And then after you attack for a couple seconds, maybe five or six seconds, you know you have to stop attacking again because it's about to you know start reflecting because reflecting comes in and out it fades in and out so you can't really hate on reflecting too much because it's kinda up to you because for the most part your pets can do without you actually generating more fetishes for a little bit um, so reflect damage I don't think is too much a problem for this build if you really want to be able to attack through the reflect you're gonna need more uh, life on hit but then that takes away from other stats so just as long as you just like I said use a little common sense it's not too bad and uh, like I said, it's looking pretty good. Um, if we can keep getting good mob density and keep getting good elites, or get not even getting good elites, it's just getting elites, period, because sometimes you don't get that great mob density. Uh, this should be a pretty easy clear on 32. If it goes progressively well, I might skip to 34. But we will see. I might have to do 32, 33, 34, and hopefully 35, depending on how it goes down. And like I said, for the most part, with Piranhas and Perinato in good positioning and having a bunch of fetishes to tank for you, it's usually not too much of a problem. See, like, now that monster's Vortex, so when it's a monster that's Vortex, I don't Spirit Walk because you're going to need the Spirit Walk to get out of the Vortex, or you will have to position yourself in a way, like, for instance, like, if I position myself right here and he Vortex me, I'm not going to get sucked into the room because there's a wall to block me, so... Versus Vortex, you either have to position yourself the correct way or save your spirit walk so that when they Vortex you, you can instantly spirit walk out of that and prevent yourself from dying. Alright. And like I said, I, that's why I like the Band of the Powerful, because like I said, I got 53 seconds left of increased damage and uh, I'm at 1.5 million damage, which is really good. And that's why I favor it so much, because usually you can keep it up from Elite to Elite. Right. Pretty straightforward stuff, nothing too fancy. I'd like to get a little bit further ahead on the meter right here, but I mean, we're doing fine. We got plenty of leeway to make sure we can guarantee it. But uh, unless I'm at level 34 or higher, like 34 or higher, I don't mind going up one level at a time. If I'm below 34, I like to actually skip a level or two because, you know... I don't, I don't like going up one at a time, but I mean, that's okay too. I mean, even if you just, as long as you clear a level, you clear a level. Even if you go up one at a time, even if you start at level 28 and you're going one up level one at a time, it doesn't really matter. 
as long as you clear it at the end of the day, that's really that's all that matters about the Greater Rift. We're getting some really easy Act 1 mobs. Uh, fairly high mob density, which is great. This is the kind of runs you always want. But, uh, I mean, that could all change quickly in the Greater Rift. The next level could be full of Act 5 mobs and make us go crazy. There we go. Pretty straightforward into the next room. Nothing to worry about. These mobs are real easy to deal with. Piranhas and Perinado. CCs them while the pets do their damage. Got plenty of fetishes out so we can keep spamming fetish army and dropping the big bad voodoo. Alright. We got an elite here, but this is pretty much straightforward. He got pulsating, so I'll take a step back. And he got frozen. I'll try to save the spirit walk for uh, if I get a bad frozen or something crazy like that. And if I have to stand back, that's fine. Fetishes are staying alive pretty well. Don't want to use the spirit walk unless I have to. So if I have to reposition myself or move back, I don't mind. Got a health globe there. And like I said, just dropping Piranhas Perinado. Got to get out that room because there's double pulsing. I don't want to die. And then, you know, sometimes you just got to let the pets do all the work. Fetish Sycophants drop off, but at least the ones from the skill are a lot more tough. I mean, <clears throat> the thing about the Fetish Sycophants is that you're supposed to keep generating them, so even if they die, <clears throat> if you got a decent attack speed, you can just regenerate them and not have to worry about nothing. Alright. And the coolest thing about the build is you can just keep spamming Big Bad Voodoo in the Fetish Army because you got the Fetish Sycophants. Every time they hit, they reduce the cooldown of a one by one second since you got an SMK or the Star Metal Cookery. Um... And then you can, you don't have to worry about the, uh, like I said, you don't have to worry about the fetish cooldown, really. You don't have to worry about the uh, Big Bad Voodoo. We also got Grave Injustice, so, I mean, in terms of, like, skill cooldown and stuff like that, we have more than enough, and then our pets are helping us out. Um, if you do like to run more cooldown reduction, that would definitely help with the spamming of uh, Piranhas of Perinata, but I really feel you just don't need any cooldown reduction, and it's better just to take whatever tanky stats you get so you can stay alive. And uh, the fetishes are doing a pretty good job of blocking, um, peeping the mob, running towards me, running pretty crazy. This is level 32, so I don't think I really have a problem with Reflect. Reflect really starts to hurt me at 34, 35. Got some good mob density. Everything looks pretty solid. Nothing too crazy. Um, jailer and pulsating, so I'll just position myself a little bit back and let my pets do all the work and just keep trying to hit Reign of Toads. Elite's dead, great. Pets are uh, going to town on all these monsters out here. We got some real good build on that meter, so we might actually skip to 35, which would be pretty nice, or at least 34, I would think, at this pacing. As long as we keep getting monsters, we should be okay. Pretty straightforward, almost got max fetishes out, and like I said, just dropping the Piranhas, Perinato, Big Bad Voodoo, keeping up the constant damage. With Big Bad Voodoo, we're up to like 2.2 million, or 2.1. Uh, it also depends on how many uh, monsters have that bleed effect with the pain enhancer on. Every monster that has that bleed effect uh, that I'm within 20 yards gives me increased 3% attack speed per monster. So big mobs are pretty nice. You might like notice like all of a sudden you just got a max amount of fetishes out because you know you're in a mob you're next to a mob of like 20 monsters. You got a real high attack speed, increased damage goes to the pets, and then everything just starts dying. Alright. Molten here, Arcane, not too much to worry about. This is pretty straightforward. We can actually just run around that. Uh, getting some pretty nice elites in the term in, in the sense that they're not they don't have like Jailer with Thunderstorm and like a lot of certain things that just when they combine together they're very destructive. I lost all my fetishes right there. I don't know how, but that's okay though, that's not a big deal. Because like I said, I can keep regenerating them. The main thing is the eight fetishes from the skill. Um, since Blizzard <coughs> buffed the survivability of them, because the ones from the skill, the fetish sick advancer, always have way better survivability than the ones from the passive. So the main thing is the eight from the skill are surviving, and then I'm just consistently and constantly generating the fetishes from the passive, so we can keep up our numbers. And like I said, all those extra fetishes do help. Our extra DPS, we all hit for about 10 to 13 million, plus all the fetishes, including the ones from the sick advance from the passive. Uh, reduced how uh, trigger that effect on that SMK. So pretty happy about that. And we spawn the Greater Rift Guardian. I'm gonna head back now. Take him out. Um, if you ever spawn a Greater Rift Guardian, always try to run back because for the most time it always seems like they're always from the back. They always spawn behind you. 
I don't know if Blizzard meant for that to happen or that's just how they spawn, but so you're not looking too far away for that elite. And what I like to do is I like to spread Big Bad Voodoo out through the whole room, just so that no matter where I move, you know, they're always keeping that damage. And the nice thing about fetishes, they do kind of block shots on some damage things. Like if you have a bunch of fetishes surrounding like this guy who shoots out poison, they'll block the poison shots that come towards you. Now he's going into his final phase, and I want to just stand back and finish him off. 5 minutes, 17 seconds, that means we'll skip uh, two levels, I do believe, so that should put us at uh, floor number 34. Um, you are going to have to start doing some regular rifts. They did do some uh, changes to Kodala, and they did do some changes to how many blues and whites you get in greater rifts. Yeah, I got 34. Um, but the one problem is you don't get a lot of yellows, and I think they kind of did that on purpose because they want you to do regular rifts to get yellows. There's certain craft of them that's like you need, like that's why they don't drop death rifts in the, uh, in the greater rifts because then people would never leave uh, the greater rifts, so. We got everything broken down here. It was a pretty okay run. Didn't get any legendaries besides the thing of the deep, but I mean, that's okay. Um, just to show you what's going on with Kodala. Um, they raised your prices, but they also buffed the chances for you to get a legendary, so it kind of balances off. Um, I won't be spending my blood shards in this part of the video series for the pet build for the tall man's finger, but on the last video, I'll use up all my blood shards and let you guys see how everything uh, goes. So like I said, this is part one of the uh, the uh, tutorial guide series, or at least the, the guide for the tall man's finger pet build on patch 2.1.1. Um, the other videos will just have me in Greater Rift level 34 and probably 35, and I'll conclude with everything, and then I'll uh, show you guys how Kaldala works now, or at least how uh, it's just basically, it's, it's, the new Kaldala change is good, but it's just, it really hurts you on getting yellows and Greater Rifts and stuff like that. But anyways, see you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and then if you guys got any questions, drop them down in the comment section. Um... Well, that's your trolling, but I mean, trolls coming. They always come and go, so. But if you actually have a legitimate question, um, you guys can definitely drop me a comment down there and I'll answer it, or you can just head over to Twitch TV or twitch.tv slash SPSDebo and ask me the question when I'm alive. I stream eight hours every day, so I always welcome the questions from people who want to learn how to become better players and learn more about the Witch Doctor class or anything in Diablo related, so I will see you guys back in the next video.